Okay. I mean, like I said, you can say that, but you have nothing. Like, he got well, shot I'm at and he's... i evidence here. <laughs> you haven't. You haven't given me a thing. What has changed? What has changed so much from Trump in 2016 to 2024 that would make somebody that was completely against him in 2016 now support him? It can't be that he got shot yeah. at. That I mean, can't, it has to be something you... more. All right, let's dive into this clip where Destiny totally loses it on this podcast. The interviewer pushes back, and you can literally see Destiny hit his breaking point. He gets completely triggered and goes off about Donald Trump winning the 2024 presidential election. This meltdown is something you've got to see. Well, Destiny, it's even points that you brought up earlier, right? In the sense that, like, a lot of people voted for Trump over Kamala because of inflation. So there's also even economic factor considered and put at the top of their mind that has also changed how they voted for this year. So, yes, it's, it's probably... Look, I, maybe I'm not giving you direct evidence, but you can't ignore the fact that there are different factors in 2016, 2020, as well as 2024. Sure. And I'm not saying that there aren't necessarily different factors. I'm just saying that the, the, the original claim that we're talking about has to do with whether or not you have to support a candidate, basically. On the left, I've given you several large media entities that don't support the candidate. On the right, every single person, even centrists or at all support the candidate the candidate and to just say well i think that every single person has a really good reason for why all of them have to support the candidate even when i've given you examples of people who didn't support the candidate and then got relentlessly bullied until they did like joe rogan and like kyle rittenhouse but you write all of it off so i mean like there's i don't think there's any way or anything i can demonstrate like nothing is more think, clear than the rittenhouse example of like what happens if you try not to support trump you'll be destroyed I, by the or the or the fox news dominion lawsuit there's nothing more clear than that if you enjoy this type of content please like and subscribe Let's continue watching. I agree with you in the sense that Kyle Rittenhouse was effectively bullied into like supporting Trump. But do you think that's the case for Joe Rogan? Yes. How so? Uh, I think Joe Rogan came out and he was like, I really like this RFK dude. I'm not sure. Like maybe I would support him. He said he was like a pretty, it was a pretty tepid, lukewarm statement. And he got so much pushback from his audience who were all like Trump sycophants. Um, even other people in the mainstream media on the right were like, hey, I don't know if it's so good that you guys are all attacking Rogan like this. And then Rogan came out and basically made a statement. He's like, oh, no, 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 guys, don't worry. I'm not saying I endorse RFK for president, guys, don't worry. Like he had to come back and eat his words because he was getting so much over the top response. It was insane. <laughs> Yeah, because and then there's also, you know, what happened with MSNBC, right? When they edited him out to make it seem like he's supporting Kamala. So he's probably also overly sensitive to things getting misrepresented. Just None of that has any like bearing on what I just said. I'm saying that on the right, no, no, no. you have what to I'm support Trump. That... I'm not talking about MSNBC or CNN editing or anything. <laughs> no. I'm saying that on the right, none of that is... made him support Trump. He has what to I'm trying to Trump. do is provide context in the sense that there's probably that thought thought process too. That's why it's probably overly simplistic to just say that he just got bullied into it. Let me know in the comments what you think about everything they are saying here. I would love to hear your take. When, you know, media has misrepresented what he said multiple, multiple times. Okay. Um... I, you're just wrong. I mean, I don't. I, I really don't know what to say. Like this stuff, like drives me so crazy that the right can get away with so much insane behavior, and then people always make excuses for it. Well, the reason why Joe Rogan had to come out and 100% deep throw Donald Trump was because MSNBC edited a clip of him one time. Like I don't know. I'm a man. I've never changed my political opinions because somebody says something mean about me like that. But then people make excuses for Joe Rogan to do this. That's so crazy to me, right? I've had people lie about me on the left and the right. I've never thought like, wow, that guy said something mean about me. I'm gonna go and support a totally different candidate. Like grow up. It's just crazy to me that you would be so willing and easily ready to offer up that excuse for Joe Rogan. Like maybe he had to be a 100% uh, Trump sycophant because MSNBC posted a clip of him being too orange one time. I, I, that's crazy to me. I, that just doesn't make any sense in my mind. But well, I guess not everybody is destiny, right? Um, yeah, clearly. Well, clearly. Yeah. Let's keep moving on. Um, let's see here. All right. So here's the gist of what went down between destiny and the interviewer. The interviewer kicks things off by pointing out that Trump's been able to keep his stuff guy images strong even after facing some pretty intense stuff like an assassination attempt. They're saying moments like that show Trump's resilience and have actually made him more popular with people who might have been on the fence before. Even Mark Zuckerberg apparently called it one of the most badass moments in American history, which the interviewer thinks has made supporting Trump. Feel more socially acceptable now than in the past Destiny's not to Tully buying it though. He's questioning what exactly has changed such that people who didn't like Trump back in 2016 would be on his side now in 2024. He feels it has to be more than just Trump looking resilient or surviving tough moments. The interviewer then adds that people's choices this time around are probably influenced by things like inflation and economic issues, which might have pushed more moderate voters toward Trump. Destiny then brings up another angle. He's saying there's serious pressure in media circles to support the right candidate, 
I mentioned show figures like Joe Rogan and Kyle Rittenhouse faced backlash whenever they didn't fully support Trump. Destiny's main point is that it's tough to openly go against Trump without facing criticism or getting bullied. By fans in certain media groups, the interviewer agrees about Rittenhouse but isn't sure if the same thing applies to Rogan. In the end, this back and forth is all about how much media pressure and public opinion shape who people choose to support. They're debating whether people genuinely like Trump more now, or if they just feel pushed into backing him because of the cultural climate. It's a heated debate about how things have shifted since 2016 and why people stick with a candidate even if they're not fully on board with everything, Hestans. For.